Hey there and welcome back to a new week of What's For Dinner. I'm so excited to share these meals with you this week because they're all simple. Plus, it has been so, so cold here in Utah. I just can't believe how the weather just changed overnight. I feel like last week it was in the 90s, but this week it's in the 40s. It's just crazy, but I have some really exciting meals, like I said, and I hope you guys are all doing well. Plus, I'm gonna show you, I don't know if you can see, but there's a chocolate cake back there. I'm gonna show you that recipe to the chocolate cake. It is the best chocolate cake ever, and if you are new here, I'd love to have you at my channel, so go ahead and subscribe down below the video, but let's get cooking. To get us started off, we're making something called egg roll in a bowl. So to begin, I'm gonna start by chopping up our veggies. So I'm just chopping up one yellow onion into smaller pieces. Now you're gonna be wanting about a cup of some shredded carrots. I just popped these carrots into my food processor and then processed them to smaller pieces. I like to do this because my daughter Brinley doesn't even notice them in her dish, so she gets extra vitamins. And then for your cabbage, I'm just chopping up about five cups of cabbage into about fourth inch pieces. To clean my cabbage, I just plopped it into my salad spinner and cleaned it like that. If you don't have a salad spinner, I really do suggest one. It just really helps cleaning veggies. Over here at my saucepan, I have a tablespoon of some olive oil in there that I let heat up. Then I just added a pound of this ground turkey that I got from Walmart and I cooked that turkey completely through. I did salt and pepper it a little bit and now I added another tablespoon of some olive oil to my pan along with my onions and I'm just gonna let those onions get translucent. This is a totally different pan, I do know that. So I had to move everything over here to my Dutch oven from my saucepan, just because I thought my saucepan was a little bit too small. So I do suggest using a bigger pot if you make this recipe. I just added in my carrots along with some ground ginger. You could use fresh ginger if you have fresh ginger on hand. I just never have it. And then I just squeezed in about three cloves of garlic. I just stirred this all together and let those carrots get soft. Here we are about two to three minutes later and my carrots are starting to get soft. I'm just adding in my fourth a cup of some chicken broth along with my two tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce and then you're gonna be adding in your two teaspoons of some rice vinegar and then some salt and pepper to taste and then you're just going to mix this around. If you have some sesame oil, you could add in a teaspoon of some sesame oil. I just totally forgot that step though. It is now time to add in our cabbage. So here I am just adding it in. You're just gonna have your heat on a simmer setting right now and I just let this simmer for about 12 to 15 minutes or until my cabbage got soft the way I like it to be. I just sprinkled some sesame seeds on top and of course I'm gonna be honest with you, this is not my favorite meal ever. I thought it did lack in flavor. You know, I was looking for some more flavor but my husband actually really loved it and it was one of his favorite meals this week. Now it's time I'm gonna be making some cheesy baked tortellini casserole with some meat sauce. So to begin into this large pot of some boiling water, I'm just adding about 20 ounces of this frozen cheese tortellini to start to get cooking. Moving over to my Dutch oven, I actually already browned a pound of some ground beef. I didn't show you that though, but anyways, it's just a pound of ground beef and I did drain out all of the excess grease. So now I'm gonna begin to season it. I'm just seasoning it with some garlic powder, some onion powder, salt and pepper, and Italian seasoning. If I were to do anything different next time, I would add some extra seasonings, probably some oregano and some basil for some added flavor, but those were the only seasonings I used this time. I 
I just stirred all of those seasonings to get incorporated with my ground beef. And now we're going to be adding in our marinara sauce. I just used this three cheese marinara sauce. It's just the commissary brand that I have here locally, but you could use any 24 ounce jar of tomato sauce that you like. I just stirred this together and I brought it up to a simmer. We want this dish to be super creamy, so now I'm adding in eight ounces of cubed cream cheese. You wanna make sure you do cube your cream cheese. It's just going to melt down a lot quicker. Trust me on this one, I have done it not cubed, and oh boy, it was a little bit of a mess, and that cream cheese didn't hardly get melt down, so make sure you cube your cream cheese. I just stirred this together and I let that melt, and now that everything is up to a simmer once again and the cream cheese is melted, I added in our tortellini and I gave this a really good stir. This recipe really couldn't get any easier, so over to my 9x13 baking dish. I do have that greased with a little bit of some nonstick spray. I added in our tortellini. I spread that out as even as possible, and then on top of that, I added a cup of some shredded mozzarella cheese along with a half a cup of some Parmesan cheese, and then for a little bit of color, I just sprinkled some parsley on top just to make it pretty, and then I stuck it into my 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes, and then I had it under the broiler for about two to three minutes or until the cheese starts to get golden brown. Here it is out of the oven. Like I said, I would just add some oregano and some basil next time just to give it some more flavor and freshness, but this came out really, really good. I just served it with some garlic toast and a side salad. We really did enjoy this meal and it made for some delicious leftovers for the next day for lunch. Now we're making chicken spinach in a creamy Parmesan sauce. So to begin, in my saucepan I have a tablespoon of butter that I melted down along with a tablespoon of some olive oil. And I'm just adding my two medium sized chicken breasts in there. I did season these chicken breasts with a little bit of some salt, pepper, and oregano. And I'm gonna let these chicken breasts completely cook and you know, let them reach the internal temperature of 165 degrees. I like to flip my chicken only once though, so it creates a nice little golden brown texture on the outside. Now that my chicken is completely cooked, I'm just going to remove it to a separate plate and set that aside. So now we're gonna begin on our sauce. I added a tablespoon of butter. I let that get nice and melty, and now I'm adding in our onion, and we're gonna let this onion saute for about three to five minutes. Now that my onion is translucent, I'm gonna be adding in my four cloves of garlic and I'm going to stir it around for about 30 seconds and wait for that garlic to get fragrant. For my seasonings, I'm just going to be adding in a half a teaspoon of some oregano along with our sun-dried tomatoes. They called for a small jar. I added a half a cup of these sun-dried tomatoes with the oils and the seasonings in them. This is my favorite brand of sun-dried tomatoes, so you can look for that. I actually got mine at Costco, but you can find a smaller jar at Walmart or Kroger, whatever grocery store you shop at will probably have it. And I'm adding in my half a cup of some chicken broth and I let this stir around. I added it in slowly. And now I'm adding in my half a cup of some heavy cream. Again, I did the, add this in slowly just to help incorporate it with the rest of the ingredients. Of course, we can't leave the Parmesan cheese out, so I'm adding in my third cup of Parmesan cheese right now, and I just whisked this together to have that cheese melt down. For the spinach, I'm adding in about three cups of some fresh spinach that I washed up. You don't have to add spinach or you could add more or less spinach, just depending on your preference. I just stirred this together and I let that spinach wilt down. Now that my spinach is wilty, I'm adding back in our chicken. I did slice this chicken up into smaller pieces though, so you could go ahead and do that if you prefer and your meal is done after you stir it together. 
Here is my plate. I served it on top of a bed of some egg noodles. And boy, oh boy, let me tell you, this was my favorite meal out of the entire week. It had crazy amounts of flavor and it was just so delicious. Now we're gonna be making a really easy chicken and vegetable stir fry. In my saucepan, I have a tablespoon of some olive oil and then I added a pound of some chicken that I sliced up into smaller pieces. And then I just seasoned it with a little bit of salt and pepper and you're gonna to wanna to cook this chicken completely through. Now that I have my chicken cooking up on the stove, I'm gonna be working on the stir fry sauce. So into this measuring cup, I have two thirds cup of some chicken broth in there. And now I'm adding in my three tablespoons of some low sodium soy sauce, and then two tablespoons of some brown sugar. You could use honey though if you don't care for brown sugar. Next, you're gonna be adding in a tablespoon of some cornstarch, tablespoon of sesame oil, and then this recipe calls for a teaspoon of some fresh ginger. Again, I didn't have any fresh ginger, so I just added a little bit of the dried stuff. And then you're gonna be adding in two cloves of garlic and a little bit of some black pepper. And then you're just going to whisk this up. Now that I have my chicken completely cooked, I'm just going to take it off my saucepan, remove it to the separate plate, cover it with a little a bit of some aluminum foil and set it aside. To that same saucepan, I'm just adding in a tablespoon of some olive oil. Then I'm adding in one onion that I sliced up and then I'm adding in about three cups of some carrots that I sliced thinner. I'm just gonna stir this around for about three to five minutes until those carrots start to soften up. And now for my other veggies, I'm adding in a cup of some frozen peas along with a cup of frozen broccoli. The nice thing about this recipe is you could really add any veggies you like. These are kind of the veggies I had on hand that I had to use up, so that's what I used. I let that broccoli get soft and then I added in our sauce along with our chicken and I let that sauce thicken up. Once it was thick to my liking, it was ready to serve. Here is my bowl of stir fry. I just sprinkled it with a little bit of some sesame seeds on top. You know, this stir fry wasn't amazing to me. I just, I really didn't love the flavor of the stir fry sauce. I was kind of disappointed because this recipe had such a high rating, but I did make a stir fry recipe last week with steak. So I will link that video down below in my description box if you wanna see the best stir fry recipe ever. I definitely had to throw this chocolate cake recipe in because Holy smokes, this is the best chocolate cake ever and you're definitely gonna wanna make it. No, it wasn't anybody's birthday, but I just wanted to make chocolate cake. We're starting on the dry ingredients first. So into this bowl, I added two cups of flour, two cups of sugar, three fourths cup of some cocoa, and then two teaspoons of baking soda, one teaspoon of some salt. And then I just whisked all these dry ingredients to combine. In this recipe, you're gonna to wanna to use a cup of buttermilk. I didn't have buttermilk, so I really like to use three fourths cup of sour cream and a fourth a cup of some regular whole milk and whisk that together. And that, in my opinion, is my favorite buttermilk substitute for cakes. Over to my electric mixer, I'm just adding that buttermilk substitute, or if you have normal buttermilk, just add your buttermilk. So I added that in there, and you're gonna be adding in your two eggs along with your cup of vegetable oil. And then I did give this a little mixing for about two seconds. And now you're gonna be adding in your dry ingredients that you just previously made. And then I mixed this all together until that was well combined. I have a cup of some hot water right here. I made my water hot just by putting it in the microwave for about a minute or two. And now I'm adding in my teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. I mixed that up and then I'm gonna put that directly into my electric mixer with the rest of the ingredients. And I let that get well combined. And then over to my eight inch baking pan. I did spray it with some nonstick spray and put parchment paper on the very bottom. I just put that cake mixture in there and I plopped it into my oven to bake on 350 degrees for about 30 minutes, but just start checking it at the 25 minute mark to see if it is done. It could take upwards to 35 minutes though. 
Now that I have all of my cakes out of the oven and they're starting to cool down on my cooling rack, I'm going to start on the chocolate frosting. So I have a cup of some softened butter and a cup of shortening in my electric mixer and I'm just going to beat these two together. Now that my shortening and butter are well combined, I'm going to start to slowly add in my four cups of powdered sugar. You're going to add more powdered sugar in towards the end, but just wait for that. Now we're going to be adding in two teaspoons of some vanilla extract along with about four to five tablespoons of some milk. If you don't want to add milk in, you could just add in water. Now that I have mixed all that together, you're going to be adding in your cup of some cocoa powder. It's just unsweetened. Anyways, I didn't quite have a cup as you saw. I only had a half a cup of that cocoa powder left, so I just added in what I had, which was a half a cup, and this still came out perfect. Now you're going to be adding in the remainder of your powdered sugar, which is two to four cups. The nice thing about this recipe is you could kind of start tasting it at this point to see how sweet you want your frosting to be. If you want it sweeter, just add more powdered sugar in. And now we're going to be frosting our cakes. As you see right here, this recipe made three eight inch round cakes and they're all completely cooled at this point. And here I am just frosting it. I am no amazing baker. I am not you know, the greatest cake maker ever. I will be the first to admit, but this was honestly pretty simple to frost. It was a great little recipe. Here is my cake. I just sprinkled it with some little sprinkles just to make it look a little bit more poppy. This came out so, so yummy. This was the best chocolate cake ever. I have to admit it was better than my own wedding cake. It was just really, really delicious. And I'll be making this cake recipe a lot in the future. And that is a wrap of another week of what's for dinner. I hope you enjoyed it. And I do have some pretty exciting videos coming out on Wednesday and on Friday this week. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, safe week. And I will see you guys on Wednesday. Bye for now.